The skies are a bustling network of highways and zones. As pilots, we are the commuters, and air traffic control is our GPS. Understanding airspace is the key to not ending up in a traffic jam at 30,000 feet. There's a lot to learn in airspace. The good thing about airspace in the United States is that it gives us the freedom to pretty much fly how we want to fly. If we don't like that airspace, we can go to another airspace and fly the way we want to fly. Airspace is crucial for pilots, air traffic controllers, and aviation enthusiasts. In this video guide from Epic Flight Academy, with assistance from aviation expert Captain Judy Rice, we will provide you with a comprehensive overview of airspace. Before we begin, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more aviation content. Let's get started. Airspace started in 1944 at a great big huge conference called ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization. And ICAO said, okay, 193 countries, we have airplanes starting to cross the ocean going to your country. We gotta have airports look similar. We gotta have airspace, something similar about it. So they had this great big conference and countries were given a choice of what they want out of what they said you gotta do. The United States pretty much picked everything that ICAO decided. Makes it difficult for student pilots. Make it wonderful to fly. Because you don't like it, you can go to another area of the United States. At its core, airspace is the portion of the atmosphere controlled by a country above its territory, including its territorial waters. It is divided into two main categories, controlled and uncontrolled. It is further divided into different types, each designated with a letter in the United States. These areas are defined to facilitate a smooth flow of air traffic and to provide a safe environment, preventing collisions in the air and on the ground. Controlled airspace are areas of the sky where air traffic control helps manage all the planes flying around. This airspace is divided into several classes. Class A airspace starts at 18,000 feet up to 60,000 feet. A good example of Class A airspace would be the skies above major cities like New York or Chicago. The upper limits of Class B airspace is normally 10,000 feet mean sea level. It surrounds busy airports and is designed to protect passengers on commercial flights. An example of Class B airspace would be the airspace around JFK Airport in New York. Class C airspaces are areas around airports with a moderate amount of air traffic. It has a smaller wedding cake shape with a vertical boundary of 4,000 feet above the airport's surface. An example of Class C airspace would be the airspace around Sacramento International Airport. Class D airspace is for smaller airports with a control tower but less traffic. It's usually a cylindrical shape around the airport extending from the surface to 2,500 feet above the ground. You still need to communicate with air traffic control. An example of Class D airspace would be Epic Flight Academy's home at New Smyrna Beach Municipal Airport. Class E airspace is everywhere else that's controlled. It's the general area of the rules to follow, but it's less strict. These areas to fly are above 10,000 feet mean sea level, with visibility requirements extending to 5 miles. An example of Class E airspace would be the airspace above a remote area like the Grand Canyon, starting at a specific altitude. Uncontrolled airspace, or Class G airspace, is the part of the sky not covered by controlled airspace. It's an open area where you don't need special permission to fly, but you still need to fly safely. This is considered all airspace below 14,500 feet mean sea level that is not otherwise classified as controlled. Think of flying a small plane or a drone in a rural area. You have more freedom, but you're still responsible for keeping things safe. An example of uncontrolled airspace would be the sky low to the ground away from airports over much of the countryside. In addition to the ABCs of airspace, there is also a category known as special use airspace. ICAO designated Class F as either uncontrolled or special use airspace. The most widely modified class is Class F airspace. 
Like most countries, the United States established separate special use airspaces to meet security and safety requirements. These include prohibited areas, restricted areas, military operation areas, wildlife refuges and sanctuaries, and more. Additionally, there is a category known as Other. That includes the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Marine Areas, Temporary Flight Restrictions, Wildlife Areas, and more. There is a lot to learn with regard to airspace, as you will see with looking at any chart. To fly in certain types of airspace, pilots must obtain specific clearances and communicate with air traffic control. For instance, to enter Class B airspace, pilots need to receive an explicit clearance from air traffic control. Similarly, while Class C and D airspaces require communication with air traffic control, the clearance into the airspace is implicit upon response from the air traffic controllers. These clearances are necessary to manage air traffic flow and maintain safe distances between aircraft, especially in areas with high volumes of air traffic or near major airports like New Smyrna Beach. Security clearances in the United States is really almost non-existent. If you follow the FAA rules, you have your pilot's license, your current, that's your clearance. As soon as you go out of the United States, including Canada, you need a security clearance. And the more restrictive, such as Saudi Arabia, the more security clearances you need. Grasping the nuances of airspace can be daunting, so learning effective strategies to learn and retain this information is very important. Visual aids like charts and diagrams can help visualize the different airspace layers. Utilizing flight simulators offers a risk-free environment to practice navigation and communication within various airspace classifications. These tips, while also discussing airspace with your instructors and fellow pilots, can also reinforce knowledge and confidence in understanding airspace. How I help students and what I recommend is break down each airspace. An example is Bravo. Bravo has very restrictive rules and regulations, but they're not too many. So start with something like Bravo. Study all the rules and regulations within Bravo. Once you got that, move on to Charlie. Once you got that, move on to Delta and etc. Echo is probably the easiest because it's the least restrictive and golf is the second easiest because it's low and least restrictive. So study it. Study one at a time, then get with a study buddy. I'm a firm believer in study buddy. Get with a study buddy. In the meantime, the study buddy is studying all the rules and regulations of airspace. Lay out a chart, have your study buddy What's that? Point to an area on the chart, and then you have to say the rules and regulations for that area. Then flip it. Study buddy, you point to area on the chart. Tell me all the rules and regulations for that. That's the way to learn airspace. Looking at a chart and saying with a friend what it's all about. Understanding airspace is a fundamental concept in aviation that requires meticulous practice and adherence to its rules and regulations. Whether controlled or uncontrolled, each airspace class is designed to facilitate safe and efficient air travel. Developing a solid foundation in airspace knowledge is crucial for navigating the skies safely. With the right tools, mastering airspace becomes a rewarding milestone in the journey of aviation. If you liked this video, Check out our other videos on our YouTube channel, and remember to subscribe to see even more epic aviation content headed your way.